Hi there, Kai. How, how are you doing? Hi, James. Nice to see you. Yeah, congratulations on the film. So powerful, just stunning and um, wonderful performance that you, you give in the film. Um, Thank I, you very I much. Really, <laughs> I, I was really touched by the, the love story at the centre of it. It's so sort of tender amidst all this kind of brutality in some ways and dehumanisation of the combat training and then um, the, the battle. And quite it's very powerful, but quite a lot goes sort of unspoken in a way. And I just wondered what you made of um, that aspect of the film and what it was like creating the on-screen relationship uh, with Ryan as Stassen. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of the driving force through the film for me is this real story of kind of hope um, amidst this, this terrible environment. Um, and uh, Ryan de Villiers is not hard to fall in love with. I mean, look at him. He's a, he's a gorgeous human being and, and has the most wonderful personality and is so generous as a performer. Um, yeah, so not hard at all to do that. And your character is pretty young when he gets uh, conscripted, isn't he? And I mean, in, there's a lot of things going on, but in, in some ways, and especially as your character is concerned, it's kind of a coming of age story to some degree, but in really exceptional circumstances. I mean, what were the, some, of, some of the things that you enjoyed about um, exploring and, you know, playing the character? Yeah, you know, for me, the most interesting kind of thing was that my dad had been to the army during a similar time to my character. So it was a real kind of glimpse into the the time period that I think formed a lot of um, white men um, uh, during that time. They, they were young and they became indoctrinated and they were militarized and became, as I like to say, kind of like pulses with the trigger finger. You know, they were these nerve endings. Um, and it was really interesting for me to interrogate being a young man who's turned into a weapon. And yeah, you mentioned as it was when it came to research, you know, you had that resource very close to home, which doesn't happen that often, I guess, as an actor. But mm -hmm. did that open up some conversations with him that you hadn't had before? And what kind of specific kind of insight did he give you? You know, the thing is, is like my dad had never spoken to me about the army before I got the film. And it was this wonderful opportunity where I got to take him for different lunches and really kind of try and understand why he went to the army and, and what was, you know, like why he wasn't a conscientious objector. And uh, which, you know, obviously with the privilege of time and space, we can say from 2020. Um, but both um, my father and Oliver, I think, kind of encapsulated and Oliver says, you know, it was a time where um, information was less and fear was greater. Uh, the apartheid regime was very good at controlling its population and censoring and segregating and oppressing them. And I think it's a very interesting title, isn't it? And it kind of suggests quite a few different things. And, you know, it isn't about literally just being gay. It brings in all sorts of um, elements of um, what isn't heteronormative or what isn't um, mm. and um, brings up, you know, elements of exa an examination of toxic masculinity, I think, in, in the film yeah. as well. But um, so I don't know if you maybe want to touch um, upon that, but then um, also maybe bring in your, your own experience. I know when you were younger, um, you're not yeah. gay yourself, but you, you kind of encountered that word just because you yeah. were dancing, right? You were doing ballet. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's so interesting, you know, um, Mofi is, uh, is a South African term, but I mean, these um, kind of words that diminish the queer community are not, uh, you know, South African, they're universal, and we've got many different phrases for um, people to do to dehumanize them, um, and kind of anything that is different, uh, and opposite to this um, patriarchal uh, norm, and heteronormative norm is, um, is, is wrong. Um, and so it was really interesting for me to kind of unpack that. Um, and the, the title was so important for both Oliver and our producer, Eric and Jack, because it was a provocation. It was a reclaiming of the title and saying, we're taking this back and we're taking the power away from it. And um, yeah, so it, a really important title. And I think for me, such a eye opening and um, a privilege to be able to have told the story. Kyle Bruma, th thanks very much. Great chatting to you and congratulations again. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks. <laughs>